And I wanted to talk about this because I think Choi was just raising the question. And I think distortion's fine where it's at. With the upcoming patch coming to Dead by Daylight, Ultimate Weapon is about to be turned into an aura reading Perth, which is... But they reverted it, right? It's an enormous buff. It makes the perk significantly stronger and allows for... Once again, Scream, instead of having their... Okay, so it's not aura revealing, but Choi just finished making it. And it only affects survivors within the locker, not the killer's terror radius. For killers to track survivors' location on command. However, there's one big outlier, which is that ultimate weapon is now hard distortion, countered ninth by most distortion. Perk. Whereas before it could only be countered by Calm Spirit, a perk few people wanted to use because it's very niche outside of countering the old version of Ultimate Weapon. So what's happening right now is Ultimate Weapon was going to reveal auras, but now it's they, they went back on that. It, the people will scream and the locker is a terror radius. <laughs> Just like Natty said, it's shittier darkness revealed <laughs> pretty much. It's still pretty severely nerfed, but it's not an aura reading perk. If you are not familiar with Distortion, it's a survivor perk with three tokens that blocks the killer's aura reading abilities for 10 seconds. Every time the survivor's aura is blocked, a stack is lost. Then for every 30 seconds, you are within the killer's terror radius. Distortion recharges one token. It also removes the survivor's scratch marks for 10 seconds each time a stack is used as well. So what I'm... Pre I didn't know that. Suppresses creation of scratch marks for the next 10 seconds. 10 seconds I didn't know each that. time a stack is used as well. So what <clears> I'm <throat> predicting is going to happen as a result of this change is a distortion meta because it's going to quite literally be a one size fits all counter to not only all 23 individual or reading perks in the game, but also over 50 killer add-ons as well. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this. So Choi's argument is that this one perk counters all of these. Okay, so this perk, um, how many of these perks do you see in every game? So this Scourge Hook, not, not often. This one, never. What even is this? You never see this. Never see that. Undying doesn't get used a lot. Um, this this goes face Teachable, that, you know, that, that's a very niche perk. Usually on like Huntress, uh, usually range killers, right? So you don't see it a ton. Uh, you do see it a lot. That, that's Grim Embrace, right? I forgot the name of this one. Face, not face, face the darkness. Nowhere to hide, to be fair. It's fairly strong in the current meta, but we haven't seen it a single time tonight. Nemesis, you never see that. Lethal Pursuer, I've played seven games so far this tonight. I haven't seen it yet. It's still a really good perk. And it is still in the meta, but so what? They don't see me and then they'll, they'll just go chase somebody else. The, this hex perk, I want to say retribution. I'm not sure what that is. Gearhead, don't see it a ton. You, you never see this one, Blood Warden. Nurses, rarely see it. Funny enough, barbecue, I don't see it a lot anymore. Again, I've played seven trials tonight, haven't seen barbecue yet. Bitter Murmur, never see that. Never see this one. Never see that. Never see that. And we saw this once tonight, but Oni was, he was constantly in chase and everybody was playing altruistic. So I actually got value out of it three times in one trial, but like it didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. I was working on a gen, but it was still close to Oni and Oni was like downing people five seconds after he put people on hook. In addition, it allows survivors and especially survive with friends to deconstruct the killers or reading perks and add-ons. That is strong when somebody can be like at the very beginning of the trial, lethal pursuer. Okay, you already know they have lethal. They probably have barbecue and or nowhere to hide. That is strong in survive with friends, but how often do you face survive with friends? Example, running Blood Warden for a sneaky end game play? Too bad a survivor lost a distortion stack near an exit gate and called it out to their entire team that you have Blood Warden. Spawning as a survivor and lose a stack instantly? Time to tell your team that the killer has lethal pursuer so they can all get into strong positions. That's Keep true. Keep in mind, yeah. all of this helps your team play around these perks throughout the rest of the entire match. Yeah, distortion is incredibly powerful in Survive with Friends because, like, let's say you're running Billy 
and the person calls out distortion immediately, everybody just knows to go to a pallet, go to a window, and Billy can't get that early pressure, and that perk is essentially nullified the very beginning of the trial. I don't think it's a good thing to like balance perks around survive with friends. I think that's something a lot of people can agree on. So some questions obviously arise from this. The biggest being is whether or not distortion is too strong of a perk. Now, instead of just condemning the perk out of the gate, in this video, we're going to explore the question because I think the answer is more complex than just yes or no. The most important thing to answer overall is whether or not distortion is healthy for the game. First, let's look at one of the most common killer main arguments you typically hear against the existence of distortion, which is that when a killer chooses to use aura reading, that means they're not using a gen slowdown perk. This means that the match is going to go at a much faster pace for both sides, and there's going to be a lot of interaction between the survivors and the killer, which is generally considered to be a lot of fun for both sides. However, that's not considering the entire story. Yes, those matches can be incredibly fun sometimes, but they can also be incredibly annoying as well. If you're a survivor playing against a nurse with four aura reading perks, especially the new version of Ultimate Weapon, on the game or midwitch, it's going to basically feel like you're playing against someone with permanent wall hacks. How often do you play against a nurse with four aura reading perks? Al almost never. Choi's making the, the argument that if, if a killer's using aura reading perks, then they're, they're not running slowdown, which is false. You can run either barbecue and chili and lethal pursuer. You can run both of those aura reading perks. And you can run too slow down. You can run really good. You can run pain resonance. You can run jolt. You can run pop goes the weasel, corrupt intervention. You can still run a lot of strong slowdown along with aura reading. And that's one of the big things I, I disagree with. It's not like you're playing for slowdown or for aura reading. You can play against two slowdown, two aura reading quite commonly, actually. <laughs> There's also this notion that aura reading is only used for fun, chase-oriented matches. But likewise, and I've done this myself often while playing killer, the information you get from aura reading perks can be used for a lack of a better term, evil. If I see where all the survivors are and I have someone on a hook, it's often way more beneficial to use the aura reading to help proxy camp an area and not let the survivors through to That's get true. the hook. Or That's I can true. use the information to slug everyone into a 4K. So this idea That's that we're true. still in 2017 DBD and barbecue and chili is the only aura reading perk just isn't true and it's a bit disingenuous. That said, it does massively suck as killer when you queue into a match with four aura reading perks only to find out that three out of the four survivors are running distortion. After this happens... Just don't run four aura reading perks, bro. It's like, it's not that deep. Yeah, I, I, I try to find a mix of aura reading and gen regression, and I think most killers do. Happens, I usually get annoyed and go back to using more slowdown perks again because they're simply more efficient. Also, what That's usually also ends up happening in matches like this is that the one survivor who didn't bring distortion gets turbo tunneled out of the game That's because also true. that aura reading isn't being used for anyone else on the team and they're getting all of it. And this segues perfectly into the next point, which is, do you hate when your teammates use distortion? I've seen a lot I of do. solo queue players specifically get frustrated that their teammates will use distortion and hide away the entire match, never Happens taking long. any of the aggro from the killer, even when they haven't yet been hooked and everyone else yep. is on death hook. There is no denying yes. that distortion is a great perk for hatch warriors and soul survivor bitch asses that are <laughs> only interested in saving themselves. Based. Now, I can't speak for everyone, but these types of players are generally outliers for me. I don't see them very often. They do exist 100%, but not to the degree where it's something that warrants a nerf on its own. I agree with Troy there. Distortion, like any perk, can be misused quite frequently. And I think sometimes the community, I'm including myself here, sometimes we get a little bit too laser focused on the one time we had a Leon in our trial who had distortion, who had windows and self-care and botany knowledge, and, and they didn't do anything. They didn't try to take chase. They didn't, they wouldn't even take hits. 
I was in a Swift one time. The person was running distortion. They had zero hooks. I was on death hook and I was on comms. I was like, yo, yo, come, come take a hit for me. Come take a hit for me. You know what they did? They crawled behind a wall and hid behind a window. And I was like, they were getting ready to run away with life when I was being chased on death hook, injured, and that person was using distortion. But I think we laser, laser focus too much on those events. And, and that's why we're like, all distortion players are bad. The, it, I don't think that's the case. A lot of good players at DBD are not huge fans of distortion. Just because the killer sees their aura doesn't mean they automatically get value. They have to still go to the survivor and apply pressure. On the flip side, a lot of survivors who aren't great in chase or even find stealthy gameplay more appealing absolutely need this perk. They need it. At the beginning of the video, I showed this picture of how distortion counters all of these killer perks and add-ons but this picture can be viewed in a different way. That being that distortion is the only real defense against all of these killer perks and add-ons. So by nerfing distortion, we're effectively removing stealth as a gameplay style from DBD, which just seems wrong as it is a fundamental aspect of the game. In my and Choi is also correct there. The thing is that that one Leon who wouldn't take a hit, would, wouldn't take chase, that person probably doesn't like being in chase. They probably don't enjoy looping the killer. I enjoy looping the killer. I enjoy that thrill. I have fun with that. But not everybody's going to have fun with that. There may be, the whole argument is like, it's a hide and seek game. Yeah, there's going to be people who get super immersed. And that frustrates me to no end. Thankfully, I actually don't run into a ton of people who do that, who play like that. And, and yeah, like Dino said, a bad memory will always be more prominent than good memories. I think that happens a lot in the DVD community. I think we cling on to these negative events and we're like, that's that's our whole experience. My opinion. Now, when it comes to balance changes in Dead by Daylight, I always try to adhere to a simple design principle, which is that when balancing anything for the game, you want the most impact at the high level of play with as minimal impact at the low level of play and vice versa. That's also Nerfing true, Dino. distortion outright simply because it becomes more widely used is short-sighted. It won't have a big impact amongst good players. If I want to run a full aura reading build, I can use Gearhead, Lethal Pursuer, Face the Darkness. I can tear through distortion stacks in no time with the right build, right? And really good loopers who are strong in chase aren't going to run distortion that much anyway because they like getting chased and they're yep, confident that's true. in the chase. That's so true. nerfing distortion, even if it shoots up in the meta, which it will most likely do, seems like it's mostly gunning for survivors who rely on stealth or prefer stealth. And it seems lame to take that gameplay style away by nerfing distortion outright. That said, when I asked about this on Twitter, I got a really great suggestion, which is insane, I know, but it's a simple change for distortion that makes it a way healthier perk overall, which is that instead of gaining tokens simply by being within the killer's terror radius, instead tokens can now only be earned by repairing generators. And this idea came from Deadbeat, DBD, and Game Chat Behaviors. That is a really interesting um, suggestion. Give tokens for working on generators. The funny thing is, <laughs> you notice Choi's build here. Uh, he's got a Commodious with max charges. He can he can rebuild this toolbox three times. Streetwise, Deja Vu, and Distortion. Built to last, thank you. So that's the other thing. Distortion gamers are low-key insane at fixing generators because they can be hidden because the killer isn't seeing their aura you know the, the this build on ada you can gen rush on your own with this build so you can give them the credit this change does a few things for one it equalizes distortion for all killers currently distortion is really weak against stealth killers like wraith because he almost never has a terror radius which makes it nearly impossible to earn stacks back that's true whereas against a killer like wesker who has a huge terror radius the survivor earns stacks constantly the disparity between how these perks work with different killers like this has zero logic to it one is better than the other for literally no other reason than the size of their terror radius so this change evens the value of the perk across all killers, and I think that's a healthy change. Another positive effect of this change is that it punishes cowards. Let me explain. 
Contrary to popular belief, <laughs> distortion is not inherently a cowardly perk. It's a perk true. that cowards like to use. For it's context, <laughs> I mean players that just hide the entire game and do nothing for the team. Now, with this change, they are forced to do generators in order to actually gain coward stacks. I mean distortion stacks. <laughs> so that works around the issue of the perk literally rewarding players for hiding the entire match. It also plays well into Gearhead completely countering Distortion, which at least gives the killers an option to counter it. And that's something that's definitely missing from Distortion at the moment. I like that suggestion because, yeah, like like I said, like this is a Gen Rush kind of one man army Gen Rush build. But yeah, if if the killer is running Gearhead, if they're any aura revealing, I think they'll eventually catch up. Because um, I believe Gearhead takes away, uh, they get to see their aura anytime they get a good skill check. Uh, it's a good suggestion. So that one very simple <laughs> Dino tiny coward stacks, has a true. massive ripple effect that again makes distortion much healthier for both sides. I'm curious what you all think about this. Do you have a different take? Let me know. Also, quick channel update. As some of you may know, I recently be Okay, I, d I don't want to cut off Choi before sharing some incredible news uh but Choi asked the question what do you think I, I think to answer the question is it time for distortion to get nerfed my answer is no and at the beginning Choi kind of said like it, it's maybe not as cut and dry as saying yes or no and I, in this case i think it is Choi's argument is that if i'm running four aura reading perks and the one person with distortion i'll just never find them well you know what's going to happen you're going to have at least two or three people you will always see with those auras. You know, it, most people play solo queue. So the chances of running into a lobby with four distortion, very remote, very small chance. And if you do, it's probably just four people in a swift on comms just messing around. Or maybe they're sweating. Maybe, maybe they bring map offerings and four brand new parts with commodious toolbox, extra charges. And at that point, you're, you're probably gonna lose anyway because of the freaking items they have. Choi's approaching this from the standpoint that if you're running four aura reading perks, it should get nerfed. Right now, that's just not the case. The current meta, we talked about this just before we started commenting on this. The killer meta right now is Pop Goes the Weasel, Grim Embrace, Pain Resonance, and either barbecue and chili or lethal or nowhere to hide, throw in a random perk, sloppy butcher perhaps, depending on the killer, of course, you're always, always going to be running into that gauntlet of Grim Embrace, Pop, Pain Res, and you've got to fix the equivalent of seven, eight generators every bloody trial. And that's a big reason why Dead by Daylight is so stale. And, and yeah, I just want to watch this last little bit here. Let me know. Also, quick channel update. As some of you may know, I recently beat cancer. GG. So long story short, starting sometime in May, I'm hey. going to start more regular streams. Fuck again. cancer, by the this way. This is going to include things like the Face Camper Tournament of Champions 2024, which I'm hyped about. Uh, we're going to be doing unranked to a rank one pinhead educational yeah, stream, got sick which I think a will little be over fun. a year ago. I uh, think. Hopefully not too easy because of the new no deep paving thing they're adding to the game so there's a lot of plans for it all coming in, ideally in may hopefully early in may and uh we'll be streaming again on youtube and twitch simultaneously so make sure to come hang out and with that thanks for watching and as always have a good one go follow Choi, incredible content creator there's the link follow Choi on twitter twitch and youtube